Chapter 27 Sacred Phallicism Every religion has a sexual origin. The worship of the Lingam Yoni and Pedunda, or Pudenda rather, is common in Africa and Asia. Secret Buddhism is sexual. Sexual magic is taught practically in Zen Buddhism. Buddha taught sexual magic in secret. There are many phallic divinities. Shiva, Agni, Shakti in India are phallic divinities. Legba in Africa, Venus, uh, Bacchus, Priapus, and Dionysius, or Priapus and Dionysus, in Greece and Rome were phallic divinities. The Jews had phallic gods and sacred forests consecrated to the sexual cult. Sometimes the priests of these phallic cults allowed themselves to fall miserably and descended to wild Bacchanalian orgies. Herodotus recounts all the women of Babylon had to prostitute themselves with the priests of the temple of uh, Mili Milita. Meanwhile, in Greece and Rome, in the temples of Vesta, Venus, Aphrodite, Isis, etc., the priestesses exercised their holy sexual priesthood. In Capo, uh, Cappadocia, Antioch, or Antioch, Pomplos, Cyprus, and Bylos, the priestesses celebrated great uh, processions carrying with infinite veneration and mystic exaltation a great phallus as god or generative body of life and of the seed. The Bible also has many allusions to this phallic cult. The oath from the time of the patriarch Abraham was taken by the Jews by placing their head or sorry hand beneath the thigh that is on the sacred member. The Feast of the Tabernacles was an orgy uh, similar to the famous Saturnalia, Saturnalia of the Romans. The rite of circumcision is totally phallic. The history of all religions is full of symbols and phallic amulets, such as the Hebrew mitzvah, the maypole of the Christians, etc. In ancient times, sacred stones of phallic form were profoundly venerated. Sometimes they resembled the virile member and others the vulva. Flint stones and silica were taken to be sacred in that with them they produced fire, fire which secretly developed as a divine privilege in the spinal column of the pagan priests. We find much phallicism in Christianity. The circumcision of Jesus, the feast of Epiphany, the Corpus Christi, etc., are phallic festivals inherited from the holy pagan religions. The dove, symbol of the Holy Spirit and of the voluptuous Venus Aphrodite, or Aphrodite, is always represented as the phallic instrument used by the Holy Spirit to impregnate the Virgin Mary. The very word sacrosancti is derived from the sacral and is thus phallic, of a phallic origin. The phallic cult is terribly divine. The phallic cult is scientifically transcendental and profoundly philosophical. The era of Aquarius is already approaching and even laboratories will discover the energetic and mystical principles of the phallus, the phallus and uterus. The sexual glands are governed by Uranus and enclose terrible forces that laboratory science will discover in the new era. The scientific value of the ancient phallic cults will then be publicly recognized. 
The entire potential of universal life exists within the seed. The materialistic, or rather the materialist science of today does not know how then to, or rather know more than to criticize sardonically, uh, which that which does not understand. In the paved courtyards of the Aztec temples, men and women used to sexually unite to awaken Kundalini. The couples remained in the temples for months and whole years, loving and caressing each other, practicing sexual magic without spilling the semen. This book was first published in 1961. Those who went so far as to spill the semen were condemned to death. Their heads were cut off with an ax. Thus they paid for the sacrilege. In the Eleusian Mysteries, the naked dances and sexual magic were the very basis of the mysteries. Phallicism is the basis of profound realization. All the principal tools of masonry serve for the work with the stone. Every master mason should carve well his philosophical stone. The stone is the sex. We must build the temple of the eternal Yupo or Upo, the living stone. Sex and Serpent A certain initiate, whose name I will not mention, says textually the following. Quote, With complete dominion of the serpent force, anything can be achieved. One can move mountains or walk on water, fly, or he or she buried under the earth in a sealed casket from one uh, from which one can emerge uh, at any determined time. The ancient priests knew that under certain conditions the aura can be seen, and he knew that the Kundalini could be awakened through sex. The force of Kundalini coiled below is a terrible force. It resembles the spring of a clock in the manner in which it is coiled. Like the spring of the clock, um, which suddenly jumps, uncoiling itself, it can cause damage for those who commit the crime of spilling the semen. This particular force is found at the base of the spinal column, part of it being in the present day within the generative organs. The Orientals recognize this, Certain Hindus uh, use sex in their religion, religious ceremonies rather. But they use a different form of sexual manifestation or magic, sex, uh, sexual magic, and a different sexual position to obtain specific results, and they have been successful. Centuries and centuries ago, the ancients revered sex. They attained a phallic cult there were certain ceremonies in the temples that aroused the Kundalini, which in turn produced clairvoyance, telepathy, and many other esoteric powers. End quote. Sex, used properly and with love, can attain particular vibrations. It can bring about that which the Orientals call the opening of the lotus flower, and it can embrace the world of the spirits. It can promote the arousal of kundalini and the awakening of certain centers. But sex and kundalini must never be abused. Each should come, uh, or rather, each should complement and help with the other. Those religions say that there should be no sex between husband and wife are tragically mistaken. Quote, those religions that say there should be no sexual experiences try to suffocate individual evolution and the evolution of the race. Let us look at an example. In magnetism, we obtain magnetic power by aligning the molecules of a substance directed towards a specific point. That is to say, normally in a piece of iron, the molecules are randomly positioned like an undisciplined undis multitude. They may join by chance, but when a certain force is applied, in the case of iron, a magnetic force, 
all the molecules face in one direction and thus magnetic power is obtained, without which there would not be uh, radio or electricity, without which we would not have road, rail, or even air transport. When the human being awakens Kundalini, when the serpent of fire begins to live, the molecules of the body are aligned in one direction, because the force of Kundalini has this effect when awakened. Then the human body begins to vibrate with health, becomes powerful in knowledge, and can see everything. There are various methods or tantric positions to fully awaken the Kundalini. The Kama Kalpa contains all those sexual positions. Nevertheless, this should not be done except by those who are truly trained for it because of the immense power and control that uh, this awakening gives over others. And because this power can be abused and used for evil. But Kundalini can awaken partially and completely with the married couple and can uh, vivify through love uh, th through love, I should say, certain centers. With true intimate ecstasy, the molecules of the body are aligned in such a way that they face in the same direction. Consequently, these people develop a great dynamic power. When false modesty and all the false teachings about sex are changed, man will again reach his true being. Once again, man will be able to regain his place as an astral traveler. The phallic cult is as ancient as the world. Sex should help Kundalini and Kundalini should help sex. Neither sex nor Kundalini should be abused. Sexual magic should only be practiced once a day. Man and women are not simply a mass of protoplasm, flesh, attached to a frame of bones. Man is or can be something a lot more than that. Here on earth we are simple puppets of our spirit. That spirit which resides temporarily in the astral accumulates experience through its body and flesh, which is the puppet, the instrument of the astral. Physiologists and others have analyzed the body of man and have reduced it to a mass of flesh and bones. They can talk about this or that bone, about different organs, but these are material things. They have not discovered, nor have they tried to discover, the most secret things, the intangible things. The things that the Indians, the Chinese, and the Tibetans knew centuries and centuries before Christianity. The spinal column is truly a uh, magnificent structure, a very important structure. It contains the spinal cord, without which one would be paralyzed, without which one is useless as a human being. Nevertheless, the spinal column is even more important than all that. Exactly in the center of the spinal nerve, the spinal medulla, is a passage that extends to other dimensions fourth, fifth, sixth dimensions, etc. The passage through which the force known as Kundalini can travel when it is awakened. At the base of the spinal column is what the Orientals call the serpent of fire. This is the seat of life itself. In Western people, this great force is inactive, asleep, almost paralyzed by lack of use. At the present time, it is like a serpent coiled upon itself, a serpent of immense power, but for various reasons, that is, because of filthy fornication, it cannot escape from its confines uh, at this thori. Uh, this mystical representation of the serpent is known as Kundalini, and in those Orientals in whom it is awake, the serpent force can advance through the pa passage of the spinal nerve, passing straight to the brain and beyond, far beyond, to the astral. As this potent active force advances, each of the chakras, or centers of power, 
for example, the umbilical, the throat, and others are awakened, and the person becomes a vital, powerful, dominant individual. Phallicism, the awakening of Kundalini, sexual magic, is not dangerous when practiced with rectitude and with love. Sexual magic should only be practiced between husband and wife. All who abuse and practice with other women outside the home uh, inevit inevitably fail. Infrasexual schools. There are many infrasexual schools in the world that mortally hate the phallic cult and sexual magic. Lovers of wisdom should avoid these schools if they do not also want to become infrasexuals. Uh, if it is necessary to remember that infrasex hates normal sex and suprasex. In all ages, infrasexuals have blasphemed against the third logos, considering sex taboo, sin a cause for shame, clandestine, etc. Infrasexuals have schools where they teach people to hate sex. Infrasexuals consider themselves to be mahatmas, hierophants, and so on. Lovers of wisdom are often confused by infrasexuals. They assume certain attitudes so mystical and ineffable, or so mystical and ineffable, so anchoretic and pious that if one does not have a certain degree of understanding, one can very easily be led astray onto the path of infrasexuality. Initiation and the Serpent It is possible to receive the initiations of the minor mysteries in their superlative and transcendental consciousness when they are chaste. Nevertheless, the initiations of major mysteries cannot be obtained without sexual magic and kundalini. The minor mysteries are none other than the probationary path, a chain that has to be broken the kindergarten of esoteric studies, the first reader. The phallic cult is the only one that can lead the human being to intimate self-realization.